Welcome to the Accelerate Church broadcast. We believe you will be inspired and encouraged to follow God and His Word when you hear Pastor Jeremy preach today on the sermon series, The Blessing or the Curse. Let's head into the sanctuary now for that wisdom and insight he shares from God's Word. Jesus gave us the keys to the kingdom. And if you need healing, you don't need the key of eschatology and end times. You need to get your eschatology and end times right so that you unlock this and you live with the blessed hope of Jesus is soon to return. You need to live with that. You see, it's almost like we have this in our minds many times. It's either we're, we're in one ditch or the other. But if you're in a fight for your life, you need to get that key of healing. And you need to feed on that. That way you unlock that blessing because that's what's needed in that moment. Jesus gave us keys. Keys show that you're responsible to unlock the door. It shows that God has trusted you to take that what was his. See, you didn't deserve it. You didn't earn it. We got all that. But my question is, why are we camped out talking about that when we need to be talking about this? Are we using the keys? Are we unlocking what he gave us are we locking up the curse that he freed us from? Come on. So we have the responsibility of binding and loosing. You could say of locking and unlocking. That's another way to paint the picture in your mind. And you need to know this. Why Matthew 16, where we ended last week, some of my favorite verses, is because Jesus says, The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Wow. And we don't need to worry about the gates of hell, though hell does have gates. What we need to be thinking about is the authority of hell. Here's the manifestation of the authority of hell, the curse. So I'm going to say it like this. And I declare this over you and your family, that the curse shall not prevail against you. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's the, see, I could go back and preach those verses, but I have a different assignment today. The sad thing is many people have lived and died on this planet. And they never walked in the plan of God. They never, never got to, I would dare say if you're going to look at percentages, even 50% of the blessing that he came to give us. Jesus didn't die halfway. So why would you give him half of your worship, half of your praise, half of your life? Why would you settle for half of the blessing and half of the curse? He died. He didn't even look like a, a person any longer on that tree. He was beaten. Most people, they would die just from the stripes. Cat of nine tails is what the Romans called it. When those pieces of glass and jagged bone would rip into someone's flesh, they would literally tear shards of flesh off of a human. Many people would die bleeding to death in agony. And he took that for your healing, for your redemption. So that you'd be blessed. He took that because you were cursed whether you realized it or not. You say, nah, I'm a pretty good person. Yeah, well, you've, you've lied at some point in your life. You told a, maybe a little bitty white lie. But once you tell a little bitty white lie, then you've got to tell a big black one to cover that white one. And it doesn't end there. One lie leads to another to another. And if you don't repent, your whole life will be a lie. Just describe some of you, sadly. You can hear it. That doesn't mean you're going to listen and, and adjust and repent. I hope that you do and hear the Spirit of God. See, I didn't come today just to talk about God. I came so that you could hear from God. I'm going to be that bold just to tell you that. I'm tired of playing church. I'm tired of hearing people in the rebellion with the cliches. The guy doesn't care about a bunch of do's or don'ts. Said the cursed person. The person that's blessed understands my pathway to the blessing always in life is O-B-E-Y, what he said in his word. So many people, sadly, they've lived on this planet. God gave them life. He's the giver of life. What a precious gift life is. They lived, they died, and they never walked in the plan of God. I pray it's not you. That's why this could be the most important series and sermon today of your entire life. 
could change the whole trajectory of your life. A big reason many people have done that, lived and died, and never even hardly sniffed the blessing is because of what they've set their affection on. So I woke up with this scripture bubbling up on the inside of me. And by the way, that won't happen if you never spend time in the word personally. But because I had a mom and dad that trained me in the way I should go, made me get in the word. I've had this memorized for a long time in Colossians. Chapter 3, verse 2. Say, thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. It says, set your affection on things above. I was looking at my car, and it's a real techie car, and it uh, has a screen, you know, and I was looking at the settings yesterday, and it actually allows me to set, when I set the cruise, to set how many miles an hour over or under the speed limit I want it to be. It reads the speed limit for me, and it sets it according to that. I was like, wow, did you know that I could not set it at 17 miles an hour over, get pulled over, and tell the police officer, my car did it on its own. I couldn't, that will not fly. You got that? No matter how techy and cool it is, that will not work because I'm still responsible to set my own cruise on the highway. Well, in God's word, something much more important, as important as that is for you to set your cruise and, and obey the speed limit. I'm not telling you to disobey it. Obey, 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 right? But get this. This is something that we look at and we have on a higher level than even the speed limit. Set your affection. You've got to set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Maybe you're not like me. I've been in church a long time, my whole life. Came home from the hospital. My dad set me down in his lap as a little infant, fresh from the hospital, right? Just being born. Said, you're going to have to repent, Jeremy. You're going to have to serve the Lord. As soon as church was available, I'm in church and been there the rest of my life. But that doesn't mean my affection has always been there. There's been a lot of times I went to church because it's what I do. I go to church. But I didn't go with any affection towards the Lord. And guess what? Coincidentally or not, I didn't receive anything out of those services. But when I have gone with an affection in my heart towards the Lord, Lord, I love you. That's the reason I'm going to dress my best, not because I'm trying to be relevant or irrelevant. I want the Lord to be honored. See, see, I, I heard this this week from my pastor, and it confirmed what we're already doing right here. He said a lot of people think it's all about what they're dressing, what, what they're wearing. He said, I'm not talking about that. It's whose presence you're in. He said he had a friend that was meeting with the president a couple years back, a few years back. And he called him and said, I don't really even know what to do. He said, well, I can tell you one thing. You better wear your suit and tie and your best. Because if you go walk up in sweats like some people do at church, they're going to kick you out. You won't get to meet. See, we think, well, it's just church. Yeah, but the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is who we expect to meet with. That's why I came. I didn't come so that you know, Pastor made to church again. Gold star. Everybody expects Pastor to be there, of course. People always say, well, I'll see you Sunday. I always say, I'll be there. And they always smile and laugh. They expect that. What if I had that same expectation on you? You know what people, who do you think you are? I'm busy. It's your job to do this. Well, there's something more important than your employer. It's your king that died for you. You see, your boss didn't climb on a cross for you. He wasn't beat for your healing. Nor your provision. We got to get things straight. We got to get things right. We got to get our affection on God. We got to set our affection on things above. So today, in a suit and tie behind a pulpit, I'm like a DPS officer here to tell you you got to get your cruise set on the right speed limit. You know, people, well, that's a speed trap. I can't believe it. he's so judgmental. He's so, I ain't judgmental. I just believe this Bible. And if you got your affection set on things on the, on the earth, you're disobeying a New Testament command to a New Testament blood-bought, Holy Ghost-filled Christian. We believe in linking up with like-minded believers, and that opportunity comes twice a month where we get to come together with our life links and dig into the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching on. 
We eat together, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships that are so vital to our Christian walk. We must be intentional with who we surround ourselves with, so we invite you to join us for LifeLinks happening on the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month. For more information regarding LifeLinks and where they meet, you can text the word LifeLinks to the number 74121, or you can head over to our website at acceleratechurch.cc. Or hey, you can give us a call at 806-418-8913. We look forward to seeing you in the next LifeLink. Our affection matters. And our affection, as you're going to see today, is directly connected to walking in the blessing. One reason many people have lived and died on this planet and never walked in the blessing or even sniffed 50% of it is because of their affection. They ignored this when they read past it. What does that mean? Well, to set your affection means to interest oneself with intensity. I like that. To set your affection, here's what it means. You're going to interest yourself with intensity on things above. I'm going to tell you this. If your favorite team is playing sports, you have no problem telling people, get out of the way. Shh, shh. You'll never shh your wife any other time. But when it's in the last minute of the game and your team, the game is on the line. And then you'll shh, you get all bold, right? Shh. Newlyweds over here like, no, give it a few years. <laughs> You'll be tempted. I mean, come on, can we talk about this in 10 minutes? I just want to see the end of this right here, right now, right? You ever, maybe you haven't seen a good game like that lately. Especially if you're a Cowboy fan like me, but hey, we actually had a chance, right? But I'm telling you, I like to see competitors play, and there was a game here, it happened I saw the video highlight within the last couple of weeks right here, a playoff game between uh, Nazareth and, and uh, Will Dorado. And it's so intense, it was controversial because it came down to the last seconds. Here it is. Somebody's behind by one point. Will Dorado, I believe. They shoot the ball, they miss. The clock goes to zero. The guy's down like this. He goes up, he shoots, but the time's zero. They counted it anyway. Half the crowd's excited. Half are still mad today. Right? But I'll tell you one thing they didn't want. Someone turning out the lights with five seconds left. Can you imagine the anger from both sides? How dare you do that? See, we have no problem when it comes to things that don't really matter. But when it's the most important thing you possess, which is your soul. Set your affections. Oh, yeah, okay. Hurry up, preacher. I got to eat. Oh. Now we're getting to where you're... The one we all, I'll stand out here so you can, the one we all deal with, <laughs> the belly. You're not the first and you won't be the last. It's easy to get your affection on that. Are you kidding me? My little joke about keeping you here to three people that are here for the first time are like, <laughs> they may not do it outwardly, but inwardly, inwardly they're like, what? <laughs> Those of you who've been here a while, like, oh yeah, that's pastor joking again. It'll be close to noon or 1230-ish. I don't know. We'll be out of here in time to eat. But we're not going to beat the early crowd. In fact, they're already at the restaurant. Do you know some people plan their church attendance so they can beat everybody to the restaurant? Do you think? I'm just asking. This is just a question. I'm not talking bad about anybody because I really don't know anybody that's told me that lately. I just know Americans. But do you really think you'll get anything out of a service if your end game is, i got to get to the restaurant first? There's no affection for God there. It's all about, well, I can't wait to beat everybody else so I can eat first. I'm about to put this mic down and just leave. <laughs> you ain't even getting anything out of this. you got to interest yourself with intensity. With intensity. Mm, I like that. I like intensity. Have you ever been, since I brought up sports, you ever been to a game where you could like, cut the air with the intensity there? Yeah. That's for a game. And we don't even think that's weird. We're like, that's a game. It's to be expected. But when it comes to our Christianity and our affection with God, it's like, 
You just have some intensity about this. So when worship starts, I'm just going to tell you, I'm sorry, but that's not intense, that look. Oh, not this song. <sighs> Sorry. We didn't realize the kingdom was all about you. We thought it was all about Jesus. <laughs> Bringing him praise, right? Yeah. Notice how the American church has become all about you. Yeah. You feeling good? Hey, we got the ACs on or the heaters or whatever we need, you know, depending upon what day it is in Amarillo. <laughs> you can come in and it's comfortable. Thank God for that. Thank God for comforts like that, right? But some people write this, man, man, it's so cold in here. Others, It's so hot in here. You know what? It's all good. We're inside. We're not blowing in the wind out there like a leaf. Why? So we can get around here so we can stir up one another, provoke one another, what? To have love for the Lord. Amen. you got to set your affection. You've got to earnestly, intently. See, it's something you do on purpose. Have an interest toward God. Let me just say this because I have been, this is what I started out saying earlier. I've been in a place because I've been in church so long where I could honestly say I don't really have much affection for the Lord. I'm just going through the motions. You've been there too. You're just not going to tell me right now. I know. It's okay. But it's true. I have a good mind to look everyone right in the eyeballs in here. That way you know. I know it's you and you and you and you and you and every one of you. And all of you streaming too. And listening by radio. You've been there. Well, you could say, I don't know that I really had an affection, but I'm going to go anyway. Right. Well, see, that's kind of how marriage is. Man, I love it when I'm feeling it, but what about when you're not? Right. I'm going to do it anyway. There's not, I'll, I'll be honest with you, people say kind of these kind of comments. So if you said one recently to me, I'm not just singling you out, I'm just, I'm just telling you, people have this idea. Well, you're a pastor, you don't know what it's really like to live in marriage out here. Well, I know what it's like to get a phone call that one of my dear saints is heading to heaven and my wife's stressing because my daughter has the wrong shoes on and I can't even hear the phone call. See, this is what people that, what? You got to erase this idea that because I'm pastor and I'm anointed to preach and teach the word of God and lead you in the army of the Lord, that that means that everything's just all wonderful at home and there's never anything to work through. There's been times I told myself, and I don't, guys, don't ever go and tell your wife. But I've, I've said, I'm going to love her no matter how she makes me feel. I didn't say that to her face. Y'all got that? Some of you guys are like, I'm going to try that today. Your wife's going to slap you into tomorrow. Justifiably. I'm talking about alone. I've been like, Lord, I thank you. She's your daughter. I've, I have committed my whole life to her. I said, until death do us part, I will love, I will treasure everything I've said. Right? I've had to remind myself of that at times because sometimes feelings are screaming at you. Well, she respected you. She'd have treated you as nice as that lady at that store. Yeah, right. That lady sees me dressed up, teeth brushed, doesn't smell my morning breath, hair combed. People go to stores, they, oh, they, they get this high. They go to work. You go to work dressed up, right? Yeah. Presenting yourself the best. Andy's like, no, I'm not talking about you, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> but you, they show up all dressed up. I'm telling you, this is what happens. But the person that's committed their life to you, they see you roll out of bed with no makeup on, ladies. Hair everywhere. <laughs> on the legs even growing out. Come on. Have to unclog the drains. Not necessarily just from leg hair, but you know. Somebody said, I can't believe you, Pat. I can't believe you sit up here and act like that ain't real. You found someone to commit themselves to you? Husbands, trimming your beard, leaving hairs everywhere? Throwing your clothes off on the floor? See, you go to work, they don't see none of that. You're down at the store shopping, they're not seeing any of that. They're seeing you present yourself, oh, like you really got it together. Well, anybody can hook up in that environment. But I'm going to be affectionate toward my wife even when she ticks me off. 
I just got that on my chest. We haven't been fighting. It just feels good to say it. Why am I even telling you all this? Because setting your affection on things above is one of the biggest keys to unlock the blessing in your life. Accelerate Christian School is located in Amarillo, Texas and offers individualized learning for students kindergarten through 12th grade. With scripture-filled curriculum, daily devotions, and weekly chapel services, our number one priority is instilling God's Word on the heart of the next generation. For more information regarding Accelerate Christian School, please visit our website at acceleratechristianschool.cc or you can call our office, 806 418 Eight nine one three. Setting your affection on things above. I'm going to show you in the scriptures. I can't just pop off and say that. And you know, oh, that's good. Pat. I mean, it's, it's word. That's right. This is one of the biggest keys. Setting your affection on things above. Amen. Now, you can gauge this. How much time do you give to reading novels, to watching the news, to watching soap operas, watching game shows, Watching sports, whatever it is, it may not be sin. Some of that is sin. Some of it isn't. But if you spend all this time and you break down the time that you've been given here on life, you're a steward of this time. If you spend a lot of it on other things other than what God's called you to, your relationship with Him, time and prayer. You see... Reasonable service as a Christian is that you present your body a living sacrifice. If you don't present your body to the Word, then you're not doing reasonable service. So no, you do not win a medal from God for going through your Bible in a year. This Word is our life. Should you read your Bible in a year? Sure. Go for it. But you're going to have to meditate on this Word day and night. That way you know what to do. You ever been in a situation where you didn't know what to do? Yes. Some of you are resisting raising both hands right now because of the situation you're in. Did you know the answer is in the Word? The answer is in the Holy Spirit and you hearing Him? But if you don't have any affection for Him, let me just tell you this. He's not going to allow you to continue to live a lifestyle where you pimp Him for His answers in hell. You've actually got to have affection for Him. Some people treat the Holy Spirit like a prostitute and expect him to lead and guide their affairs in life. It's not going to happen, folks. Has he given up on you? No, but he can be grieved. In fact, he can be outraged. If you read your New Testament, it's outrageous for you to think, oh, give God lip service, but your affection is really on something else. Study your Bible. It's never gone well, whether it was the children of Israel, New Testament believers, or anyone else. You've got to get this affection thing right. So here, here's a key for you. I wasn't playing. It's not in my notes. How, what do you do when your affection, how do I get my affection set the right way? What if today you walked in and you're not really feeling any affection towards the Lord? Here's what it is. You've got to break it down to this. What do you yield your attention to? Whatever you give attention to creates affection. If you are giving attention to something, it will grow an affection in that area. Let me just be honest. I have not played golf, well, not even one time since last summer when we had our, uh, for our sports program, our golf tournament. Not once I haven't even played. I have not made time to do it. So right now, if I went out, I would shank more shots than I would hit straight. Because it is what it is. And if you really want to know the truth right now, I have no affection. I have no desire to even go play, especially in that wind. Now, I say that there's been a time in my life where I gave my attention to it enough that I didn't care if it was windy. I would dress with thick layers to get out there because my affection is on that. That's just to show you how easy it is to develop an affection for things. It's also that easy to get away from having an affection for that. So, no wonder if you come in here and you're not feeling an affection. If all week you could examine your week and you'd be honest with yourself and God and you'd say... You know, I came to church Wednesday. I mean, that's good. That is good. That's better than most in this American end time culture. However, just coming to church on Wednesday ain't going to cut it. Because I guarantee you, you've eaten a lot of food since Wednesday night. 
They sure on a fast or something. And here's what you need to know. See, people, they, they have no problem feeding themselves many times, two to three, sometimes four times a day, let's be honest. Snacks all in between. <laughs> Not me, Pastor. All I had was a little cold snack Wednesday night. Yeah, all right. You'd be so famous, we'd have to pull you in here. If you fed your flesh the way you feed your spirit, you wouldn't be so plumpy. It goes for me, too. I don't like it when you talk that way. Well, I don't like it either, because I go back and watch it, and I'm like, ooh. All right, I'm dieting tomorrow. I just want... I, I'm feeling a check by the Holy Spirit to hold up. I'm wanting to move on. And I'm going to show you this in the Word. I am going to do that. But I, you got to get this. What you yield your attention to will develop an affection. So if you yield your attention to something for a few minutes, you're just going to have a little bit of affection for that, right? Are you listening? If you then yield your attention a little bit more to that same thing, you have a little bit more affection for that thing. This is how simple it is. What you give attention to grows your affection. And this is a huge key to unlock the blessing in your life. What? Having a real, genuine love for the Lord. Amen. See, you may need to be reminded of this. You have a lot to be thankful for. Amen. And I could honestly tell you this. And you saw this Wednesday night. As, you know, as my associate minister, but he's my father-in-law, Mark has watched my marriage for 20 years. He's the one I had to go to back when he was a concrete foreman even. The reason I bring that up, he's wearing boots. It was a little intimidating to ask him for his daughter's hand at that moment in time in my life. But thankfully, he made it easy for me. But I remember him sitting there in those boots, and I thought, ay, ay, ay. A little scared. But my affection was so hardcore for her. I said, I'm willing to face the possible wrath of dad so that I can have the blessing of the father on our marriage. Amen. See, that's what you have to get. You have to get to a place where your affection is stronger for the Lord than your care for what other people think. Well, this wraps up Pastor Jeremy's teaching on the blessing or the curse for today. Although there's much more to be heard from him and you can access that online at our website, accelerate.church.cc. Under the sermons tab, you'll find the blessing or the curse along with everything else Pastor Jeremy has preached. And if you are in the area, we have a seat for you right here at Accelerate Church. We invite you to join us on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. or Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. in Amarillo. We're located at 4400 South Crockett. And again, we have a seat waiting for you. We're so glad you joined us on today's broadcast. We believe you'll be blessed as you apply God's Word.